I was going to wait and do my February update video at the end of the month like I normally do, but since some people are already making videos with inaccurate information about the new features, I figured I would make it a little bit sooner, offer up some actual knowledge, and hopefully dispel the misinformation already floating around. Before we dive in, I want to remind everyone that there is a Pseudorite Discord server where you can find lots of tips and information like what I'm about to share with you. For example, this is our channel for the quick chat and quick edit features. This is open to all Pseudorite members now that it is out of the initial beta phase, whereas before it was locked down to those who opted in to the testing. You'll see over here, we have everybody with the purple name is staff member. So you know their replies are very accurate. And then you'll notice a section of people with blue names. Those are our ambassadors. Anyone in the server with a blue name is an ambassador, and we have several that actively participate in the community and share their tips and tricks here. For instance, you can see John Creason. He's got some amazing tips. I call him the mad scientist of Pseudorite. He's always experimenting. And of course, we have Claire. Always has some awesome stuff to add. Ambassadors are the first ones who test things out. That way we can spot the bugs and you hopefully don't have to deal with them when the new feature does get released. And you'll typically see us doing demonstrations in classes to give you an idea of what's coming out. In fact, if you've been using Sudorite long enough and attended classes, you might recall that Miss Lynn demonstrated the chat feature back around June or July of last year. This was what we had started testing before Story Bible and plugins were even announced. When the Story Bible interface was released for testing, the connection to chat was temporarily broken. Then plugins took center stage and the team became focused on the switch to credits to make plugins affordable. Now that the rush of all that has settled down, we have not only the chat feature back, but a bonus tool, Quick Edit. Together, the tools are called Quick Tools. And I have a document here that I will link in the description. Of course, you have the Sudorite Discord server you can join here. But this is also some information that you should know about Quick Edit and Quick Chat. And again, check out the Discord channel as well. This one is the beta Quick Edit. And that's where people are sharing their tips or any issues they are having with Quick Chat and Quick Edit. For instance, one of the things that recently came up was the fact that it doesn't save our stuff anywhere. So if you make a prompt, you don't have that saved. And in terms of quick chat, your output isn't saved anywhere. They are taking some suggestions on how people would like to see that happen. One of the most obvious is just having it be one of our cards over here on the right. We'll see what they come up with for that. And again, this is the same information that I did copy in that document. Came directly from Ryan Mather one of the developers, so it is accurate. Just keep in mind that as they make improvements or implement suggestions, things can change. And if you scroll through this channel, you'll see lots of other great information and tips. Let's look at some of the things you can do with the new Quick Tools. I'm gonna to come over here into our Jack the Ripper story. This was one we had generated or received output from a plugin I had used, and there was a little issue of it making everything sound like a play. We're going to look at how Quick Chat and Quick Edit handle the same prompt as well as our rewrite feature. Now, rewrite only handles up to 650 words, so for continuity's sake, I want to make sure I keep it that way. Right there. I'm going to go ahead and click rewrite first. This is what you're used to. And I'm going to tell it customize and rewrite to remove any reference to stage, audience, or a reader. Because that was the issue with this. I loved it otherwise, but that was kind of throwing it off. And I'm going to copy just to make sure I use the exact same prompt. I'll click go. Remember, rewrite customize holds up to 13 words. If you have my pseudorite guide, which of course you do, if you've been in my classes, I have a lot of prompts here to try out. 
Hopefully you'll find them useful for your story. But if nothing else, experiment that way. You can get an idea of which works better for your needs. Lots of things here for you to play around with. All right, let's see what it did. I'll just ask it to remove any reference to a stage, audience, or reader. But still reads in that very narrator type of way. But it doesn't have much to work with in terms of the original writing. I didn't make any edits. That was all a sort of mistake from the AI. But again, we like the impact of the scene. So we kept it and worked with that for that particular story. Not great. It was rewrite customized, but again, it also didn't have anything great to start with. We're going to keep the same highlight. Now, since I already used it and selected rewrite, that pop-up isn't there anymore. But if I press control K, cause I'm on a PC, then I have quick edit, quick chat. And of course it's command K if you're on a Mac. But defaults to quick edit. But I can toggle it over to Quick Chat. Currently, in the default mode, Quick Edit and Quick Chat use 3.5 Turbo, and it is free. So it's not using your credits right now. If I click to turn on this higher quality, you'll see it uses credits, and this is using GPT-4. So GPT-4 with the higher quality turned on, GPT-3.5 Turbo as the default. I'm going to put, using Quick Edit, but the same thing that we did for rewrite. Rewrite to remove any reference to a stage, audience, or a reader. Let's see what happens. We do know that people are not really happy with where this box is positioned. They are taking that into consideration. That's the great thing about being in the Discord. If you have ideas, suggestions, you could put it there and they will listen. Not great for a narrator's voice, but quick edit did better than rewrite, which has been typical of the experiments that I have done so far. I'm just going to go ahead and reject it just because I don't need it right now, but I could accept. Now, if I do ex click accept, it's going to replace everything. That is another suggestion that has been made. Somebody mentioned they would like to keep both versions and combine everything. Now, if I were to accept it and it replaced that output and I was like, hey, I want that back. I want to be able to add the two. Remember, I could go into my document history and grab that older portion and combine the two. Now let's do quick chat. We'll compare this output. I have noticed it does take a little longer on this and people have actually stalled on this screen. Quick edit is looking at the highlighted text, the preceding text, synopsis, characters that match, the linked outline chapter, genre, and style. Quick chat is looking at all of the docs in the project that have information it deems relevant to your request. It doesn't consider the titles. And then it looks at all of the characters and the genre oh, and highlighted text. Again, all that information is in the document that I will link in the description. So here we have, this was very, very similar to quick edit, which makes sense. I mean, it is using the same model. Let's do, I'm trying to stay in the same amount of words, a little bit off, but. If I go back here and now turn it on, I'm going to put that same prompt in. Since we know they're the same model and will likely output the same thing for quick edit, quick chat, I'm just going to run this once with the higher quality. Now I have done edits with quick chat. I've asked it to rewrite a scene, same thing as I would do in quick edit. I told it to rewrite a scene to do something in particular. It did a really good job. So think of quick chat as your kind of all in one tool.
I like this a lot better. This is something I will definitely play with when I start writing that story. But I want to keep it with the original right now, so I'm not accepting anything. Those are our quick tools. Quick edit, quick chat. Again, if you saw a quick chat demonstrated last year, very similar. Just a bit of a different look. And now we have quick edit right here. I will link this document in the description. On top of quick tools, we actually have some other features or updates rather that will be released soon. I wanted to go over those with you real quick. But right before we jump into the new stuff, I want to dispel some more misinformation that I hear repeated quite a lot. For some reason, people seem to think Pseudorite's context window is a thousand words. Pseudorite utilizes OpenAI for the majority of its features and boxes. So all these Pseudorite boxes, they are some version of OpenAI. For instance, your Beats box, chapter generator right here, when you generate Beats, that is using GPT 3.5. If I come to a blank document and go to do first draft, this is using GPT-4. So keep that in mind. The context window is appropriate for the model being used. We don't have an updated document that tells you which model it is for every single feature because they're also constantly updating this as new models come out and something else works better. However, one thing that was a thousand words was our write features. If somebody wanted to use auto and guided write, we always let them know that read back a thousand words. Let me go to a chapter that actually has a good bit. Okay. So if I came down here, this chapter has just under 4,000 words. If I came down here and wanted auto write to kick in or guided write, it would read back a thousand. That's the way it was previously. As of now, it is drastically different. If you didn't watch my last update video and haven't heard the news, Auto and Guided Write are now connected to Story Bible information. They see your genre, style, your character box, and your chapter summary for whichever chapter you have linked. You can see here it's chapter 11 that I have linked. I could change this, update it for whatever chapter I want it to work in. If I want to go to chapter 13 now, now chapter 13 is linked and I can continue writing that back so I don't mess myself up. Since this update, the write mode can actually read back up to 20,000 words. This isn't the case all of the time. A lot of it's going to depend on which model you select here. So obviously, if I use something like unfiltered, Goliath, it might not take all of that into account, those 20,000 words. But I know if I'm using best pros, most accurate, or GPT-4 Turbo, which is balanced inside Story Bible. I know if I'm using those or Mixtral, it's likely going to take that into account. So it does do some adjusting according to which model you have. However, it does have that capability of reading back 20,000 words. If you always had trouble inside Story Bible, you always hated the fact that the chapters didn't seem to talk to each other. They were very disjointed, had to do a lot of transition scenes. This can solve that problem for you. In this morning's class, we actually tested this out with four chapters. So you see here, chapter four, but this started as chapter one. And we read through and it flowed seamlessly. So this is an option. The only thing now is similar to working with beats and needing to learn how to write good beats. Now we kind of need to learn how to manipulate the chapter summary and see what gives us the best results according to our preferred workflow methods. I like my stuff simple. However, I am noticing this isn't so great here in auto write. So I may go back to using some nicely detailed paragraph formats here and then using my beats as needed. 
since it's reading back so much. Again, we're under 4,000 here. I can scroll down. I know if I go to chapter five, it's still going to read back likely all of this, especially I'm leaning towards GPT-4 Turbo and Best Pros in my documents. I know it can handle it. Let's say it's covered everything in my chapter summary. I'm ready for my next beat. This is something I have seen people mention. They wish they had the inline stuff or could make changes on the fly. Just add a story beat at a time. You can do that. Put your cursor where you want it. Go over here. Click into Guided Write. Write your story beat. It's as simple as that. This works amazingly well, y'all, and it's very simple to use. This is an entirely different workflow. If you're not happy with using Story Bible, you might like this method. In my opinion, this works best if you have a really good idea of how your scene is going to play out. So you're doing the initial writing because it does pick up on your style. This was all AI generated, no editing whatsoever. The style was just very on the nose and not good at all. But again, our focus was seeing how well it transitioned throughout those first four chapters. It does take style box into account, but it also takes that style for your previous writing into account. Style box is weighted more. That means if you're very happy with the output, the way you write in the document itself, you might prefer to have an empty style box here. It's just going to pick up that flow, the same style that you use in your document area, and it's going to keep going with that. Or you might just want to take this out or just remind it that it's writing in first person past tense. Just leave that. Play around with it. Always experiment, see what works best for you. But this style box is the last thing it looks at, just the same in Story Bible. Style box is the last thing it looks at before it generates prose, so it has the most impact. Make sure that's not contradicting your style up here. And of course, if you were unsure, you could always take your style here and use the match my style feature to make sure it was on track. So what other changes do we have to look forward to inside of Pseudorite? There is, of course, the character box that Ryan has been working on. You can check out the suggestions that were made in the characters improvement suggestion inside Pseudorite in the general channel. This is where they are going to increase the limit or possibly remove it entirely. I think they're leaning towards removing the limit on all Story Bible boxes. I don't want to hold them to that, though. The new character box will have a lot more room, and they're also working on us having some templates to use right away. But, of course, if you didn't like what they came up with, you could still customize that box. So increased character box and increased other boxes inside Pseudorite. They recently held some Zoom meetings where they asked users to share their workflows and what they would like to see done differently. A lot of people shared some great ideas for improvements. I told them I would love to see Canvas utilized for more things, something like mind mapping. And I could essentially do that now, but these boxes are kind of very clunky to work with. I'd like to see that improved. People have some great suggestions, and they are taking all of that into account to satisfy its users. But of course, they still need to focus on what is good for their UI and what is good for the majority of people. Also have to balance new users, because remember, we've been using this a while. We know how to navigate what is there. So new features aren't going to be anything to worry about for us. However, we are constantly getting new people every single day that are using Pseudorite. They're having to dive in and learn all of those things that we had to learn back when Story Engine was in beta on top of any new features that come out. Think of Scrivener. Look at how complicated Scrivener is for new people. It's a hefty learning curve. Sudorite is trying to balance to make sure they essentially don't turn into that where it just becomes very complicated for new users and they get overwhelmed with trying to learn everything. The character box update may come first. It could also possibly get delayed and maybe they want to release all of the box updates at the same time. I do not know that. They haven't let us know yet in the Ambassador channel. However, there is a community hangout meeting coming up this week. If you go to our Luma page, you will see community hangout on March 1st. Well, I highly recommend attending. You can ask questions and get updates firsthand. 
this isn't something that is just up to ambassadors. When Sudorite releases something or thinks about releasing, they do tend to ask the community as a whole. We just tend to be that first stop along the way. They might say, hey, we've been thinking about this. What do y'all think? Is this something users would want? We would chime in whether or not we think it's a good idea. We're also that first stop along the way of testing. That's why generally you'll see in classes we demonstrate something y'all don't have access to yet, but we explain that it's in beta. We kind of demonstrate and ask for y'all's feedback there in class. We can turn around and give that to the developers, and then it gets released to the general user population after we have spotted any bugs and they wipe those out. In my opinion, that saves y'all a lot of frustration. Y'all aren't having to deal with those bugs right away. We handle that for you. So I highly uh, encourage you to attend the community hangout. Also attend the classes so you can get glimpses of things like that. And of course, if you cannot make classes live, there is the course videos channel here in Discord where you have a lot of our past class recordings. There are two more things being tested and you can participate in those as well. One is what is being called My Voice. That's where James takes a sample of your writing and creates a sort of fine tune for you to use directly in Sudorite. You can think of it as the much my style on steroids. I heard someone joke. The details are here in Discord, but essentially you email James. He needs at least 5,000 words from whatever manuscript you want to use for your writing. Please, I know I shouldn't have to say this. Please make sure it is your writing. Do not do something and submit it from Stephen King or some other author you like. That's just wrong, y'all. Give him at least 5,000 words of your writing and he can make a custom write button for you. Lots of people have tried this out. Lots of good reviews on it so far. And you will actually be able to have multiple voices. If you write in more than one genre, fantasy, horror, romance. You can have one that's a little bit different for each as long as you provide the writing sample for that. That is still being tested, and you can find that information here in the Discord to email James. Another isn't really a feature, but rather Sudorite testing out the capabilities of Gemini Pro 1.5. James has asked if anybody wants to submit something and kind of get an idea of how well Gemini Pro will work, please do so. All right. That is it for now. Again, there's that community hangout coming up this week, March 1st. You can register for that and get any updates firsthand or ask questions. Please, if you're not in the Discord, join. We're always helping people, showing our tips and tricks for things. We have the help in general channels where people ask questions for any particular issue they need help with. And then, of course, we just have a nice community of people having some great conversations about AI, pseudorite, their stories, all of that stuff. I hope to see you there. Bye, everyone.